Hey Ryder, do you want to see what's going on around campus and in the community? Well, you know we have it all right here on Ryder, right now. Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Kelly Dixon. This Monday, Ziegler Hall experienced an electrical fire. Garrett Williams has the story. Hey, Ryder. I'm reporting from the lobby of Ziegler Hall, right in front of the lounge where we just experienced a small electrical fire. Right behind me, you can see maintenance men cleaning up the debris. Come on, let's check it out. On Monday afternoon, sparks fired in Ziegler Lounge from a ceiling light. One of the light fixtures in the first floor student lounge caught on fire due to a defect in the fluorescent light tube. According to facilities, a tombstone in the fluorescent light had fragmented which caused a spark in the light fixture. I spoke briefly with Director of Facilities and Operations, Mike McConey, on how facilities is taking care of this problem. Well, we have to, uh, first we've already taken care of the area you know, by cleaning up the area and we've uh, repainted the ceiling where there was some you know, black soot from the fire and also we have to replace the light fixture. This is the first time that uh, I've seen this happen um, with these type of fluorescent fixtures. They're very safe. And um, we couldn't really, between myself and the fire marshal, we looked at the fixture, you know, the burnt fixture. We, um, we deducted it was something wrong with that tombstone. And as he stated, it's something, you know, very rare, rarely happens. And the fact that it did happen uh, on this fixture uh, was something he hadn't seen in quite a long time. The light fixtures are now up and running in Ziegler Lounge thanks to facilities. This has been Garrett Williams reporting for Ryder right now. Luckily, none of the Ziegler residents were hurt from this incident and facilities are currently correcting the problems. Sustainability Day is a nationally recognized day on college campuses. Ryder University did their part by inviting Tom Zaki to speak to students about the importance of going green. Farrah Thompson was able to catch up with him. Hi, I'm here with Tom Zaki, the CEO and co-founder of Trenton-based TerraCycle. Thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Can you tell me briefly how your company got started? Sure. I'm, I'm 26 now. Um, when I was uh, 21, I was going to university, and my friends and I, we were growing, well, my friends in Canada were growing plants in their basement, and uh, they were having a really hard time with these plants, and they started feeding the plants worm poop, which is really organic waste fed to worms. They poop out worm poop, and that's what started the, uh, that's what really got me excited about garbage and, 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 uh, and building TerraCycle. How does TerraCycle encourage others to be eco-friendly? We really try to deal with non-recyclable waste, so garbage that has no solution to it right now other than being thrown into a landfill. And we create big national collection programs. In fact, so far our program is touching about two million people today can collect waste, send it to us, get paid for it, and then we make really cool products from that. We hope to really drive that more so more and more people can get involved. What role does sustainability play in company decisions? I mean, everything about TerraCycle is about sustainability. We try to make economic decisions by making the most sustainable decisions. So what I mean is by building a product out of waste, we get paid for our raw materials. And that allows our products to sell for less money, which is a great economic decision, but still based on a sustainable decision. Why do you feel it's important to have a National Sustainability Day in addition to an Earth Day? I mean, the more awareness people can drive towards sustainability is key. I don't think it's important necessarily to have a day here, a day there, but just having people really thinking about eco-friendly, sustainable thought is important. And so if that means a sustainability day and, you know, and an Earth Day and maybe in the future a planet day, all great stuff. The more the better. There has been a big push to encourage people to go, to go green. Describe some of TerraCycle's goals for the future. Fundamentally what we want to do is we want to uh, show that you can create any product out of waste and that any type of waste can be made into a product. And if we can prove that, we've eliminated the entire idea of garbage to begin with. And what's amazing is we are doing that in a very big way as we speak. You are so young but so successful. What encouragement can you give to current college students? I think especially in college, you know, and people our age, is what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to fail? And you know what? You're not, you don't have a family, you don't have a house to lose. And that's the most important thing about being in college and looking at starting a business, whether it's sustainable or not, is really there's no risk. Now is the time to give it a shot. Thanks so much for speaking with me today. Thanks for having me. This is Farrah Thompson for Ryder Right Now. To learn more about TerraCycle, visit www.terracycle.net. A lot of things are going on around campus. Here's Kathleen DeFrancesco with the latest from Senate. 
This week at Senate, cranberry cabs were the topic of discussion. SGA Vice President John Chabra discussed the cab service and the appropriate time to use it. It was originated as a way for students to have a, a safe ride back to campus in an emergency situation. Um, and that's really the, the spirit of it, to allow students to get back to campus, have an alternative to you know, maybe driving when they shouldn't, or uh, relying upon a, a friend who maybe has made some bad decisions over the course of the night. Uh, and so that's really that's the spirit of the initiative, and that's what we're encouraging students to hold to, to not really rely upon cranberry caps, but use them in more of an emergency situation. Students can get cranberry cab contact cards at the SGA office in a student affairs suite. John also dismissed rumors about the service that were floating around campus. There was one rumor that you know, if you use the Cranberry Cab program three times or more, you're automatically enrolled in an AA program. That's just not the case. This has been Kathleen DeFrancesco for Ryder Right Now. This past week, Ryder celebrated Unity Day. Eva was there to catch all the action at one of the weekly events. The Food Fest for Unity Day was an evening of fun, socializing, and most important, a wide range of different foods to try. The event was made to showcase different cultures and the food from them. I think the food was very delicious. Um, there was Italian, there was Chinese, and there was Spanish. The entertainment started off with a short traditional Irish dance. Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated performed a step exhibition, showing an aspect of historically black sororities and fraternities. New dance team Couture did their first public performance, showing Ryder community what's in store. Um, we were really excited about it because this was our first debut. Um, we wanted people to see what Couture was really about. The event was short yet needed, giving students a break from dailies and some quality entertainment at the same time. The um, entertainment was good, the Irish stepping, the Irish dancing, the sorority stepping, and the cold tour dancing. This is Eva De La Cruz reporting for Ryder right now. Keeping up with the spirit of unity, students were able to come together to celebrate Magnus. Garrett Williams was there to catch all the excitement. Hey Ryder, I'm here in the Alumni Gym celebrating Midnight Magnus. This year the theme is Medieval Magnus. Come on, let's take a look. This year's Emerging Leaders sponsored the event by completing the medieval theme with actors in costumes, long red carpet, and medieval portraits. The night kept rolling as students celebrated the introduction of the winter sports. This year's Magnus was set up differently than previous years. Not only were students celebrating the start of the winter sports season, but Bid Day was also incorporated in the mix. The Greek community enjoyed this year's Bid Day celebration along with Midnight Magnus. Rob Aberman from Ryder Sports Corner met up with me to speak with a few students. I'm excited to see the dance team. All year, Bid Day. Magnus, you can't beat it, right? The night was full of entertainment. Not only were students being entertained by dunking contests and dance performances, but some students participated in an ice cream eating contest. Magnus seems to be a success this year due to the huge turnout. This is Garrett Williams reporting for Ryder right now. We would like to wish the Ryder basketball team good luck on a great season. This week is International Week. Gina Grasso was able to sit down with Dr. David Walton of the Division of Social, Medicine, and Health Inequalities. Let's see what they discussed. Healthcare and the economy are two huge controversies in the 2008 presidential elections. After dedicating his life to medicine, Dr. David Walton joined us to speak about bringing justice to the two. Thank you, Dr. Walton, for joining us today. We really appreciate having you on the show. My pleasure. Today you came to Ryder to speak about justice and medicine. How are the two related? I think they are related in the most fundamental ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, I th you know, when you look at either examples from this country or examples where I mainly work, Haiti, you see that really gaps in justice predispose people or put people more at risk for developing disease. You know, there's a lot of data, there's a lot of, you know, evidence to suggest that racism, say, puts people at, you know, they have low, the worst health outcomes compared to people who, in which racism, you know, they don't experience racism, or poverty. People who are poor, they just get worse care, or no care at all, say. So, the, you know, it's, you have to have a broader definition of justice, I think. How would you define justice? Well, I think, you know, most people think of justice as I often thought of justice as kind of 
you know, you commit a crime, you go to court, and you know, like OJ recently or, or whatever. Um, but you know, I think justice has a much broader implication. And I think, you know, if you take a look, you know, you need to have a different look, use, look through a different lens, as it were, and step back a bit and say, you know, what, it, you know, what are human rights and what are, you know, inalienable rights for people in this country or really people around the world, I think gives a, a you have a, bro a different paradigm of how you're going to look at, you know, uh, the travesties of justice say. America's economy is a huge debate in the presidential election. If things don't start improving, do you think that they can fall into the same pattern that Haiti has fallen into? I don't. You know, it, people talk about the healthcare crisis, and you know, and it, it's significant, surely. But you know, we have, thankfully, some of the best healthcare in the world, and we have systems in place to assure that even this, uh, even if in times of significant crisis, we will still be able to provide our citizens most anyway, because there's a lot of people who don't have access to healthcare. Uh, great, a great, really, the world class care. McCain, on one hand, wants citizens to buy their own health care, while well, Obama wants their employers to provide them with it. What do, you, what do you believe is the best for the United States? You know, I think my perspective is that health care is a human right, and I think Obama's health care plan, while not quite, you know, create, providing health care for everyone, provides health care for more than, say, I think McCain's plan would. And, you know, it, it, it really boils down to how I think they view health care. McCain views healthcare as something to be bought and sold. You know, they're going to provide tax credits. And I, I, again, I don't know all the details of the plan, but you know, he says people should. You know, the market will create ways in which and will be more competitive, and healthcare will be more affordable. But I think Obama's plan comes closer to my own view, which is that healthcare is a right, and that every every citizen of this country should have access to healthcare. Thank you so much Thank for having all. for joining us. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you. For Ryder right now, this has been Gina Grasso. Now we're going to turn the show over to Garrett, who's going to tell us about what movies we should be seeing this weekend. Thanks, Kelly. This weekend, be sure to check out The Secret Lives of Bees. This all-star cast includes Queen Latifah, Jennifer Hudson, Alicia Keys, and Dakota Fanning. The film is set in South Carolina in the 1960s and the follows the story of 14-year-old Lily, who was haunted by her mother's death. With the help of her caregiver and only friend, played by Jennifer Hudson, she runs away from her lonely life and abusive father and meets three sisters who just might hold the key to her mother's past. All right, act. You know she's in some kind of trouble. Well, who's gonna take them in if we don't? So what if that trouble follows them? I feel like I'm where I'm supposed to be. I really do. I just need some time to figure out why. So don't say anything. Yo, secret. For all you high school musical fans, the wait is finally over for the third and last installment of the Disney trilogy, High School Musical 3. Senior year shows the whole Wildcats gang stage and spring musical that addresses the experiences and hopes and fears about their future. If you're looking for something more action-packed, go see Bodies of Lies starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Russell Crowe. DiCaprio plays a CIA operative working in Jordan to search for terrorists who have been bombing civilian targets. With the help of his boss, Russell Crowe, he devises a plan to infiltrate terrorist networks. Our world is a lot simpler to put to an end than you might think. Ed Hoffman is the head of the division, but he does not know enough until he steals it from the guy on the ground, and that's me. Rules of the day. The car gets immobilized, start shooting, nobody gets traded, everybody dies. Same as every day? You got it. Be sure to check out these and other movies playing at your local theaters. Back to you, Kelly. Thanks, Garrett. If you don't feel like making the trip to a theater, you can always check out what movies Ryder is playing right here on campus. This weekend, SEC will be showing Pineapple Express at 7.30 in the BLC Theater. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Tune in next week for a very special election episode, followed by a Halloween special. This has been Kelly Dixon for Ryder Right Now. We'll see you later, Ryder.